All right, if you guys saw the last video about the plasma cut fixtures, you saw me using these uh, 5 8 bolts to kind of move the stuff around real quick. And I imagine you guys were kind of uh, calling BS on that a little bit, where really, um, unless you put a nut on the bottom of those bolts, they're not going to give you the binding power you need to really use this as a fixture. So um, I looked up at some ball locks, and the legit thing to do is spend about 25 bucks per fastener and uh, just spent a bunch of money. So I was really thinking that there's gotta be a better way. So I went ahead and bought a bunch of off the shelf hardware from McMaster Car and brought it in. And we're just gonna run a few tests here and see what we can make work. Um, I've got a bunch of different ideas. Uh, we're gonna cover a lot of ground uh, from a simple bolt um, all the way to like even some masonry anchors that I'm gonna test out. And I'm really just trying to find a cheaper off the shelf method of securing these fixture blocks from the top. And I, I really think there's, there's got to be a way, but none of these are exactly perfect. So if uh, you're looking for a solution here, this is not the video for you, really. Um, but if you want to kind of learn and f just kind of see how all these work, and maybe you might get some ideas of your own, um, just stay tuned. And we're going to kind of work through each one of these different style of fasteners. All right, so here we go. Really, uh, this toggle right here, first of all, doesn't even fit in the hole. All right, first and foremost, I really like this guy. So if you'll notice these bolts right here, they have a little bit of slop in these holes, you know, which is totally normal because they undercut this stuff a little bit. But this guy right here, the shoulder bolt is just a little more true to size. So there's really no movement at all in it. So if you need a really tight tolerance, I would definitely switch over from these bolts to this style right here of a shoulder bolt that has a machined edge right here. Um, that way it's just truer to size. Um, not a huge savings again with these over what's uh, commercially available for stops, but if you're trying to save a few bucks, this will definitely do it. Now onto the testing phase. This is actually a little toggle bolt. You see it in a lot of Ikea furniture, um, just super cheap, readily available at Ace. Um, but the problem is here, it doesn't actually fit you can't wrap it around into this hole. So that's a bust, but it's worth a shot. Next thing we have here is a, this is actually a concrete anchor. You wet set these um, in a pour and then come back later when the concrete's set up and now you have your little anchor bolt sticking up out of the ground. They make these in a hook as well as an L. Um, I was just grab this to see if I could get it into these holes. But as you notice, it puts itself in a bind before you can even make the turn and get down in there. So this is a bust. There is also an L style that kicks straight out. Um, you probably could lace it in the hole, but I'm afraid of once you put it in a bind, um, there's really not much to keep it from slipping out and popping out on you. So um, I wouldn't go that direction either. I picked up these handy little uh, dial screw uh, wheel thing bolted doogles. Um, just trying to make this a toolless transition if possible. And then this is the first style of expansion anchor we got. It's called, here we go, come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. This is called a drop-in anchor. And the idea here is there's a plunger in here that gets pushed down by the bolt and it forces these little wings out onto each other. Um, the problem I had here is I can get this started, maybe. Anyway, so you get this going in here, it bottoms out, you drop it in the hole, you know, it's a little bit of slop there, not as tight as I'd like it. And then you really can't, you really can't keep it in a bind. It just, it just keeps spinning on you. Oh, actually I got it to bite right there. But as you guys see the problem, we're locked in, but we have not engaged this clamp because this is just a little bit too long. The other issue is, let's just say we stacked like some washers up right here to create a bind and get this to work, which we have a really nice, strong hold. You know, this guy's really not going anywhere. But now as we come off of it, it really doesn't take itself out of a bind. Now it's like stuck in the table. So you can do something like that. But then as you try and draw it back out, 
it's permanently in a bind now. Like that plunger has done its deal and there's no way to get it back out. So, uh, not quite the business here either. Let's see what else we can figure out. Oh, here you go. You kind of see how it works. See now how it's mushroomed out and that little pin in the bottom right there has been doing the work. And from the top, I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's a little plunger that this steel pushes down to make this expand. Great for concrete, not great for a fixture table. Let me show you the next concrete masonry anchor thing we tried. Um, these actually come out of the box. It calls for 5 8 hole, but you'll realize it doesn't fit. I think it's meant to be beat into a 5 8 hole for a masonry anchor. It's not meant to slip in and out. So I grabbed the flap disc and uh, I guess machined it down. <laughs> if you want to call it that. So now it'll slip inside of this hole and uh, we can try to get this collar or this, uh, I don't know, this plunger right here to slip over this collar and expand and hopefully lock us up into one of these holes. So see how that works. All right, we got it kind of started here. Slip it in there. See if we can get this in a bind. Yeah, I feel it start grabbing. So once again, locked really nice down well into this hole, not going anywhere, but we haven't really captured our tool into a bind yet. So I wonder if maybe you just tap this down a little further into that hole, and then try and come back up on it. So once again, something's, you know, something's kind of happening here where this isn't really drawing down you know, into the table. So this isn't really gonna work either, guys. The other issue you run into is how do you get it out of the table? It really doesn't wanna come out smooth because that sleeve has now expanded over the top of the other piece. <sighs> yeah, so this really isn't gonna work either. Here's the next kind of option I was working with. This is pretty interesting because it wedges from the top and the bottom. So far, everything else we've worked with has only wedged out and expanded from the bottom. So I'm kind of wondering how this is gonna work. It also has a little spring around the outside of this collar to help it detract back into itself when you come off of it. Um, so this is pretty, pretty interesting. And I think, you know, these are like one to two bucks a piece. The washer's obviously less than a dollar. And this little thumb screw here uh, I want to say it was uh, between three and five on McMaster. So, you know, all in, sub ten dollars. Here we got to come all the way off of it. But this guy, we're starting to grab a little bit onto the tooling, so. This is definitely some progress. Let's see if I really crank down on it. You know, it's almost, I mean, we're getting closer. Still not quite where it needs to be. And as far as extraction goes, Not one of its strong suits. And now the whole thing's come apart on me. So, oh gosh, it was close, but still fail. This one right here was the most interesting um, because basically it's already machined to 5 8 It fits in these holes really well. Um, once you get this toggle deployed underneath the table, this has like massive binding power. You could really come up on this. The problem I ran into is this threaded part was too long. Um, so basically from this point right here to this point right here, the end of the threads is like one inch and we need to get this down to half an inch. So if you'll notice this little black line right here, that's about how short I need this toggle to be to work. Um, so I'm going to talk to, I think I'm going to 3D print actually a sample of one of these and see if I can just get the dimensions to work out. 
um, if it's even like physically possible to have all these functions occupy the same space. Um, but from there, if that works, um, I might call a local machine shop and see what happens with these because here's kind of the cool thing you can do is when you slide this in the hole, you want to deploy, you want to deploy the toggle, right? And really you can just use centrifugal force. So if you flip this thing around, if you spin it, this toggle right here flips out. So now we're in a bind on this table. Well, I ran out of threads. Then you can crank down on it and get your tension you need. And when you're done, you can just unscrew it. You guys hear the train? Just when I was thinking it was only the compressor I had to deal with for sound out here. All right, back to the show. All right, so now we're in a bind. We've gone and cranked down on our tooling. Uh, we're done and we want to pull it out. This guy, just release the tension, let that toggle drop straight down again, and now you can retract it right back through. So there's not something off the shelf yet that does this exactly how we need it to for a quarter inch tooling and quarter inch table, but this is pretty close, so I'm gonna put some more energy into this idea right here, guys. Let's see if I can come up with something. All right, and I had to try the humble drywall anchor here. Um, if you read the box, these call for a 5 8 hole, but if you stick them in a 5 8 hole, it's not gonna happen. So, yeah, that doesn't work. But if you go all the way down to the itty bitty 3 16 toggles, now we have something that this hole can deal with, right? Um, the only problem is, of course, to get it out, you're not gonna get it out unless you can reach under the table. Um, but these are so cheap, I figured basically you could just crank down on these if they work and uh, unscrew them and let them drop underneath the table. And then at the end of the day, you could just go and pick them all up and uh, throw them in a bucket. And you could have like a bucket of probably two or 300 of these for less than 50 bucks. So um, let's see if it works. we can get. So the holding power here is the most significant we found from an off-the-shelf um, ready-to-go application. Not great for uh, tightening down from the top or um, releasing this from the top, but uh, maybe a potential solution for some of you guys. I'm not sure. Uh, very interesting all the same and really it proves the concept that you don't need a pin that occupies the entire space of this hole You just need some way of clamping the two together because if you draw this steel hard enough against this steel right here They're gonna bind and they're not gonna move anywhere. So you don't actually You know, maybe I could visit a smaller toggle with a smaller diameter that would have a different dimension from this point to this point um, Because we don't really have to occupy all this space if we can get enough force clamping together and I really probably shouldn't have saved this for the end but whatever um, if you guys are watching this going oh crap what do I do now with all this tooling um, basically all you need to do is get some sort of pin to locate it this way and then you can use one of your clamps right here put this thing in a bind and you're ready to go. So you can totally use all this tooling with just clamps and bolts, but I'm really trying to come up with a more efficient solution because pretty much everybody else that makes tables or fixtures has these uh, ball locks. So I'm still working on it. I'll let you guys know. So not any really great solutions. I'm kind of calling this a fail right now but um, some promising ideas and stuff that's definitely worth exploring some more. So I'm gonna spend some more time over the next week or two working some of these out with a 3D printer and possibly with a local machine shop and see what I can get done. And I will keep you guys updated as I figure this stuff out because I know this is important to you um, and the efficiency in your shop. So let me help you guys figure this out. Happy making, hope you're having a great week. Uh, oh yeah. Hit subscribe, follow along, check us out on Instagram, check us out on our website, makertable.com. 
and uh, happy making.